Some people are born to do a certain thing. And that was the case for the son of a son of a plumber, Cody Garrett Runnels, a.k.a. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes has wrestling in his DNA. He's the son of the late great Dusty Rhodes, one of the most charismatic individuals who has ever laced up a pair of boots, and the half-brother of Goldust, one of the most iconic wrestlers in WWE history. You can say that Cody was destined to be a part of the wrestling world. Very few, though, could have predicted just how far this kid from Marietta, Georgia will go. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the fascinating career of one Mr. Cody Rhodes. As we mentioned earlier, Cody was born in a wrestling family, so he was trained on the fundamentals from a very young age. Al Snow, Danny Davis, Randy Orton, and Rick Morton took it from there and resumed Cody's training, who made his Ohio Valley Wrestling OVW debut in May 2006. There, Cody quickly formed an alliance with Sean Spears or, as he is more widely known, Ty Dillinger. Those two found great success as a tag team, winning the OVW tag titles twice. But, as every good tag team, they eventually split and ended a feud with each other over the OVW Television Championship. Cody lost that feud, but he was off to better things in the main roster. Cody's first main roster program was against one of his trainers, Randy Orton. Rhodes tried to defend his father from the vicious Orton, but lost both matches he had with Randy. The careers of those two are linked heavily, and their relationship didn't end there. It was only fitting that through his trainer and first main roster rival, Cody got his initial taste of the main event scene. After the 2008 edition of Survivor Series, Rhodes and Manu aligned themselves with Orton and formed the original version of Legacy. Not long after Legacy took its most familiar form, at least to me as a young wrestling fan, i.e. Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Ted DiBiase, it was his entering in Legacy that elevated Rhodes to the main event, allowing him to mix it up with Randy's opponents such as Triple H, Batista, and Shawn Michaels. Following Legacy's implosion, Cody began his journey as a singles wrestler. During that run, Cody won the IC title twice, but also spent some time partnering with Drew McIntyre and, of course, feuding with Orton, his old frenemy. During 2012 and 2013, Rhodes teamed up with Damian Sandow to form the team Rhodes Scholars. Once this ended, Cody, after six years on the main roster, entered a program with his half-brother Goldust. During this run alongside his brother, Cody and Goldie won the WWE World Tag Team titles twice, but it was also when Cody was given the Stardust gimmick. Many viewed that as the beginning of the end for Cody in the WWE, and they were unfortunately, or fortunately, right. While being under the Stardust gimmick, Cody was not given any meaningful storyline, and on May 21st, 2016, Rhodes revealed on Twitter that he had requested his release from WWE, which was officially granted the following day. The two main reasons which led to this decision by Cody were his frustrations with creative and his position within the company. He also noted that he had pleaded with writers to end the Stardust gimmick for over six months and pitched numerous storyline ideas which had been ignored. At the time, WWE released a guy who was just wandering from one pointless storyline to another. Little did they know that this would turn out to be one of the biggest mistakes they ever made. With WWE in his rearview mirror, Cody began his adventures in the indies. He made appearances for many promotions, but it all started in Evolve and a match against Zack Sabre Jr. From there, he wrestled for Northeast Wrestling, for one of the many incarnations of TNA, GFW, PWG, and WCPW, to name a few. One of the highlights of Cody's run in the independent circuit was, of course, the trilogy of matches with one of the all-time greats, Kurt Angle. But bigger and better things were on the horizon for the American Nightmare. On July 19th, 2016, Rhodes announced that he will be at ROH's final battle on December 2nd, and thus his reign in ROH began. 
His first match with the company was against Jay Lethal, and the babyface Cody immediately turned heel and defeated Lethal with a low blow. Just eight days after that, Cody made one of the most important moves, not only of his career, but as it turns out, one of the most important moves in wrestling's modern history. But more of that in a minute. A feud between those two followed. And when it ended at Supercard of Honor 11, the American Nightmare set his eyes on the ROH world title, held at the time by a legend of the company, Christopher Daniels. After one unsuccessful attempt at War of the Worlds, Cody finally captured the first world title of his career, defeating Daniels at Best in the World. From Stardust to World Champion, in the mid-time, Cody settled down with ROH. After one year as free agent, and the move we mentioned earlier took Cody to the stratosphere. The move I was talking about earlier was, of course, the entry of Cody in one of the best factions in the history of pro wrestling, Bullet Club. During NJPW's World Tag Team League Finals, Cody announced himself as the newest member of Bullet Club, and a few days later at Wrestle Kingdom 11, Rhodes was victorious in the debut match against Juice Robinson. After going through David Finlay and Michael Elgin at Wrestling Dontaku and Dominion respectively, the Nightmare was about to face the toughest challenge of his career, the greatest champion of the modern era, Takada. The IWGP Heavyweight Champion defeated the ROH World Champion and Cody's luck in high-profile matches didn't get any better. He lost his ROH title to Dalton Castle on December 15, 2017 at Final Battle and fell short against Kota Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom 12. A series of hard losses might have an unpredictable effect on someone. They might force him to snap, and that was exactly what happened with Cody Rhodes. In a stable full of alpha males with strong egos, friction is sometimes inevitable, and under the leadership of the cleaner, we had already seen an example of that with Adam Cole. Unfortunately, Cody fell in the same category. While Cody was falling short against Ibushi, Omega was losing his IWGP US title to Jay White. This of course didn't sit well with Kenny, and he was so mad about this loss that he prevented Adam Page, his stablemate, from challenging Jay during the new beginning in Sapporo. Cody thought Kenny was stealing Page's moment, and he attacked him with the help of Hangman. The Civil War had begun. What followed was one of the best heel runs I've seen. Rhodes manipulated everyone within the club, trying to turn them against Kenny and, of course, get them on his side. And he succeeded to some degree. And thus, a series of matches pitting members of Bullet Club against each other started at both ROH and NJPW. The tension climaxed during the supercard of honor when Cody defeated Omega after the Bucks accidentally superkicked Kenny. But Omega bounced right back by finally defeating Okada to capture the IWGP heavyweight title and make peace with his two best friends, the Young Bucks. This seemed like the beginning of the end for Cody's claim of leadership, but it took something more than that for our hero to turn to the good side. Despite his huge victory against Okada, Kenny didn't forget about his loss to Cody at Supercard of Honor and chose the American Nightmare as his first challenger. Rhodes fought hard, but in the end, fell short against his bitter rival. After the match, Tamatonga, Tangaloa, and Haku came out and it seemed like they were going to congratulate Omega, but instead of that, they decimated him and the rest of the elite declaring themselves as the Bullet Club firing squad and the true Bullet Club. Tama even gave Cody a chair and the opportunity to hit Kenny, who was lying helpless on the mat. It was at this moment that Cody finally realized how wrong he was all these months. Our hero finally realized that together they can achieve anything, and on the other hand, divided, they got their asses kicked by just three dudes. The face turn was completed. Cody attacked the Tongans instead, but they were too much. All this happened on June 9th, 2018. This day felt like the beginning of the end for the elite in Bullet Club. And looking back at the events that followed, it was indeed the beginning of the end. By the end of October, Kenny, Cody, The Bucks, Marty and Adam Page were no longer a part of Bullet Club. 
But before that, Cody and the Bucks, while still being under the Bullet Club banner, put together one of the most historic events in pro wrestling and probably the catalyst of a revolution. As with many great things, the idea of All In was born with a question. In March 2017, a fan asked Dave Meltzer on Twitter if Ring of Honor could sell 10,000 tickets, and Meltzer responded, not anytime soon. Hold our beers, said Cody and the Bucks, even though the Bucks are straight edge and accepted the challenge. The show was initially going to happen under ROH's flag, but eventually it evolved into a self-funded event, and Cody with the Young Bucks knocked it out of the park. Not only did they sell out the Sears Center Arena in Chicago in under 30 minutes, but the show delivered at all levels, with 11 fantastic matches featuring huge names. As Cody said, All In felt like a revolution, and a few months later, he started that revolution with his friends from the Elite. We said earlier that by the end of October, all the Elite members distanced themselves from Bullet Club, and on the very first day of 2019, they made one of the most important moves in modern wrestling. On January 1st, 2019, Cody unveiled a new promotion, All Elite Wrestling, and himself alongside the Young Bucks and later Kenny Omega as the executive vice presidents, with the economic support of the Khan family and the knowledge of the wrestling business from Cody and the Bucks. AEW has already signed some of the best guys out there. All In was the spark, and Double or Nothing, AEW's first show, was the start of the revolution. And all this wouldn't have happened if Cody didn't take that bet from Dave Meltzer. At Double or Nothing, Cody Rhodes put on an amazing performance against his older brother in one of the most emotional matches of 2019. Being one of the EVPs of AEW, one of Cody's main goals was to put over young talents, especially in the beginning. And he did exactly that in a fantastic match against Darby Allen at Fighter Fest. The two went the distance in a time limit draw, and after the match, Cody was attacked by Sean Spears. Rhodes would exact revenge at the sequel of All In, All Out, and not only that, but he earned the right to face Chris Jericho for the AEW world title. But before that, Cody was a part of one of the most important events in wrestling the last 20 years. On October 2nd, 2019, we had the very first episode of AEW Dynamite. History was made, and Cody played a key role in that. For the first time since WCW perished, we had a legit alternative to WWE on TV. Befittingly, Dynamite is airing on TNT, bringing back all the memories from the Monday Night Wars. But on the first episode of AEW, Cody alongside the Young Bucks were beaten down by Jericho, Santana, Ortiz, Guevara, and Hagar helping Inner Circle to introduce themselves with a bang in AEW. Almost a month later at Full Gear, Cody was on the verge of achieving something that nobody would have thought when he started his career. Cody had the chance to become a world champion in his own promotion. That was the biggest match in his career, and the stakes got even higher because of the following stipulation. If Cody lost to Jericho, he would never challenge for the AEW world title again. And unfortunately for Cody, that was exactly what happened. Chris had him in the walls of Jericho and MJF, Cody's best friend threw in the towel. And just like that, his dreams for an AEW world title run were crushed. Cody hit rock bottom. Things only can get better from that point on, right? Not so fast. After the match, MJF proved why he is the best heel in the business, turned on Cody, and kick-started one of the best feuds in AEW so far. The following months, Cody was on a mission. The American Nightmare did everything he could to secure a match with MJF. An opportunity to get his hands on his former friend, an opportunity for revenge, for justice even. But, like many things in Cody's career, this didn't come easily. If he wanted to get a match with MJF, Rhodes had to meet three stipulations. One, he couldn't touch MJF. Two, he would have to defeat Wardlow, MJF's bodyguard, in a steel cage match. 3. He would have to take 10 lashes with a leather belt. That was an enormous task for Cody to overcome. The mind games, the taunts, this grin. Cody had to put up with all of it. The 10 lashes were hard to watch, but Rhodes persevered. He couldn't quit in front of his friends, his family, his wife. And after he defeated Wardlow, he finally got the chance. 
But just like in the match with Jericho, Cody failed and MJF prevailed. Our hero didn't get his revenge and MJF was now a legit star heel in AEW. The Nightmare needed a chance to bounce back. He wasn't able to pursue the AEW world title and he had lost the feud with his bitter rival. He needed something. And that something was the brand new TNT Championship. Eight wrestlers, Darby Allen, Guevara, Colt Cabana, Dustin Rhodes, Sean Spears, Lance Archer, Kip Sabian, and Cody. Eight wrestlers battled for the chance to become the first ever TNT champion. Cody grabbed the opportunity with both hands, and by defeating Sean Spears, Darby Allen, and Lance Archer in the finals, he tasted gold in his company for the first time. Finally, some good news for the EVP. But if you notice, there is a problem here. Cody helped Darby Allen get over. He was among the first victims of the Inner Circle. He further solidified Jericho's run as world champion and he catapulted MGF's career. It seems like Cody is there to help somebody get over an AEW, to give somebody momentum. And the next one in line was the leader of the Dark Order, Brody Lee. Cody was squashed by Lee so badly that he had to take time off TV. Something had to change with Cody. Something was not going right. And that time off was a great opportunity to do so. When Rhodes made his AEW Dynamite return on September 23rd, he was a changed man. He dyed his hair black and showed a side of his we haven't seen since Bullet Club, his vicious side. And he rode that wave of momentum and got his title back from Lee. Now, is a heel turn imminent for Cody in the near future? Only time will tell what's next for him. As you can see, it's not easy to tell with Cody. Cody Rhodes is on the way to be one of the most important figures in modern wrestling. He loves this business and he took many and major risks trying to make wrestling better for everyone. He's a true fighter, a true leader, but most importantly, Cody is a true wrestling fan.